New year, new rules, and a new anchor. Welcome, Alyssa. Thank you, Tom. It's it's great to be on here with you. You know, after 15 years of bringing our members the news every week through AOPA ePilot that right. comes out each Friday yep. morning, it's nice to also be able to share the news with you uh, every week through AOPA Live. We're glad to have you aboard, Thank and you. we'll tell you a little bit more about Alyssa at the end of today's show. Well, if you don't know this by now, what hangar have you been hiding in? You now have to have ADS-B out installed to fly in what they call rural airspace. Well, the ADS-B mandate uh, went into effect on January 2nd, um, just after midnight local time, um, all the way from the Caribbean through the Pacific, all the way to Guam. Um, and now that we've uh, had it in place for about a week, um, we can say things are going pretty well. Um, we've had quite a few calls, uh, quite a few emails to AOPA. Um, mostly on um, explaining where the airspace is that requires ADSB and helping pilots who are not yet equipped get equipped. So what is rural airspace? Most simply, any place you need a transponder today. But of course, it isn't quite that simple. Sure, you need, need ADSB out to fly in Class C, B, and A airspace, but you also need it for some Class E airspace too. And don't forget the Mode C veil around most of the big airports. Yep, you need it there too, even if you're outside of that Class Bravo. And here's a gotcha, you cannot fly over Class C or B without ADS-B out. But hey, the Friendly Aviation Agency has some tools to help you. The first one they call ADAPT, the ADS-B Deviation Authorization Preflight Tool. That's a mouthful. Exactly. Now, this is a way to get permission to enter the rural airspace without ADS-B, but you can't count on it as a way to avoid installing ADS-B out avionics. The ADAPT tool is designed for single flight authorizations. It's not for routine, repetitive use. It's to get you in and out on an infrequent basis. If you need constant ability to get into the airspace under your own terms, your own timeline, then we would suggest you equip or you look at a long-term option like a letter of agreement. AOPA is happy to work with pilots who are eligible and get a letter of agreement with the air traffic facility. We have a lot more information on our website and the folks in our Pilot Information Center can help you as well. And here's one more thing. It's an FAA interactive map to show you all of the airspace where ADS-B out is required. Now, Tom, you've been equipped for a while, right? I have, I was an early adopter. Back in 2013, I did a panel upgrade and went ahead and got ADS-B out at the time. So I've got the Garmin 330ES extended mm -hmm. squitter. So that's my ADS-B out. And that's what uh, means I can fly internationally because that's accepted interla internationally as opposed to the UAT, which is the alternative. I do have a GDL-88 also, which is the my ADS-B in. And that's what allows me to display traffic and weather in the cockpit. You. Nice smartly waited <laughs> yes. much longer until there were more alternatives and a lot cheaper solutions. Yes, I, I drug my heels for quite a while and I was looking for a cheaper alternative. I fly a Cessna 170, so an older aircraft, I wanted something right. more affordable. Right. And uh, Mike Collins installed the UAvionics Sky Beacon, uh, the wingtip Sky Beacon on the 170. Uh -huh. And it's, it's really easy to operate. Uh, I keep my transponder in altitude mode and so once I turn on the avionics and then turn on the nav light, it takes about one minute for right. it to acquire and then I'm good to go. Yeah, and uh, that UAvionics is pretty neat. You can control the whole thing from an app. Exactly, yep. Yeah, you can uh, set it all up. It's pretty, pretty cool, I hear.